I would um, like to thank um, all the schools for supporting our project as well and giving us this funding to start uh, work to look at host determinants of disease severity um, in SARS-CoV-2 infected uh, patients. Um, this project is a collaboration between myself, uh, Dr. Wei Chen from the Department of Statistics, um, Dr. Forthal, uh, Chief of ID, and Dr. Buckmeyer. And the goals of this project are to address really two questions. Um, one is what is the nature of the immune response to SARS-CoV-2 infection in both severe as well as moderate cases of COVID-19. Um, so what we want to do is compare the host immune response in patients who are admitted to the ICU and those who end up uh, just being admitted to the floor or are not at all, um, don't need to seek medical help and can um, uh, don't have severe disease. And then our second question is, what are some of the immunological and biomarkers that are associated with and can correlate with COVID-19 disease severity and outcomes? And so the idea here would be, um, the long-term goal would be to have a point of care biomarker, um, such as a specific cytokine or specific metabolite that can be easily measured in the blood at the time of admission that could be predictive of disease severity and needs of the patients down the road. And so these two questions will be addressed in three aims. Um, in aim one, we're going to focus on the innate immune response to SARS-CoV-2. There's plenty of evidence that suggests that a dysregulated innate immune response where um, there is a cytokine storm, but a dampened uh, type one interferon response is responsible or associated with severe disease. Um, and then AIM-2, we will look at the kinetics and magnitudes of the adaptive immune response. And so that's the T and B cell responses to SARS-CoV-2. Um, again, in severe cases, there is uh, some clinical data that suggests that severe cases have this dysregulated cytokine storm that is accompanied by a dampened ability of the host immune system to produce appropriate antibodies and T-cell responses. And then AIM-3 will look at a transcriptional landscape of the host response to SARS-CoV-2. And so our experimental design is uh, as follows. Um, so these would be really valuable preliminary data for an R01 that we are hoping to submit in the next six months, as soon as we actually can get some good preliminary data. Um, and so we're starting with um, enrollment of, uh, or access to samples from 10 patients who have severe disease, um, 10 patients with moderate disease, so ICU versus non-ICU, and then PBMCs from, um, at this point, Conv convalescent um, individuals. So individuals who we know have, have did not have severe disease and are past the acute stage of disease. Uh, we have not come up yet with a clever way to capture people who are diagnosed with COVID-19 but are sent home um, to recover. And for this study, we will, um, we're aiming to get two very critical time points, um, blood samples from the time of admission as well as the time of discharge. Um, and of course, from these uh, controls, we're getting just one blood sample, a single collection. Um, and then these blood samples will be processed to obtain plasma and PBMCs. And the um, analysis of the innate immune response will consist at this point of using um, CYTOF, um, which actually, so we're really excited about leveraging this resource that is now in the stem, stem cell center. Uh, but we'll use cytof mass, mass cytometry to look at activation of, mac, of macrophages, monocytes, dendritic cells, natural cholesterols, et cetera. And then the plasma will be used to measure a whole, um, a, a number of cytokines and chemokines and, and other immune mediators um, that are good inflammatory markers. Um, and then the PBMCs will be used to measure the adaptive immune response um, by, again, doing more uh, mass cytometry to look at T and B cell activation. We'll measure the frequency of SARS-CoV-2 specific uh, T and B cells by doing LE spots um, to measure interferon gamma producing T cells as well as antibody producing B cells. And then we'll use the plasma to measure antibody titers um, using an ELISA. And then the single cell RNA-seq will be used to get a higher resolution of, of the immune response with greater granularity that can really be afforded by even mass cytometry. So this will allow us to look at the transcriptional level at the single cell level and then correlate that with metadata. And so the most important part, of course, um, after the collection of all these data is the integration part. So this is where Dr. Shen will um, maybe be able to provide great expertise. He has a lot of experience with large data sets and 
configuration, but we're going to um, hope to integrate the mass cytometry data, the proteomics data, as well as the single cell RNA-seq data and the LESPOT data so that we could build a model that explains what are the key differences between individuals who end up having severe infections and those who have moderate infection and compare that to individuals who have recovered with very few complications. And we're, we're hoping that these data will set the stage for a larger R01 where we can actually build upon these um, uh, initial observations and use it to look at uh, specific repertoires of SARS-CoV-2 specific B cells. So our goal is to isolate SARS-CoV-2 B cells and be able to sequence the B cell repertoire. And this is really becoming more critical as convalescent plasma moves to the forefront of some of the therapeutics um, that are currently deployed in the clinic. And we will also look for T cell epitopes. So these, this deconvoluting what the T cell response is actually directed against in the virus. And that's an initial first step in terms of developing vaccines. And so that's all I have and I'll take any questions. Okay, thank you. That was pretty close to time. So there's room for several questions. Um, Suzanne, it's Mike Bookmeyer. Great. Go do for you, it. Ilham, do you think it will be possible to recover those clones of cells that, that you do find? There are a number of companies and individuals that are making monoclonal human antibodies, and that would be a nice therapeutic if you could identify the population to uh, the target. Yep. So that's one of the goals that we want to do, Mike, is um, once we've characterized the, the immune response at the 30,000 foot view, is to go in and um, pull out antigen-specific B cells using just labeled S protein and N protein, for example, pull those out and then uh, clone them individually and sequence their B cell repertoires and be able to at least understand which ones of what, what are these B cells uh, receptors look like and, um, and then be able to compare um, those particular repertoires to the magnitude of the antibody response via ELISA. And so slowly start identifying the B cell clones that are making strong binding antibodies and neutralizing antibodies versus those that are not. So yes, a very long-term road down the line is helping the effort of generating monoclonal antibodies. Ilhelm, can you use the chromium system to get more insight into specific uh, regions of IgG response? Yep. That's, yeah, so that's a part of our single cell RNA-seq. We will couple that with the chromium reagents that are now available for TCR and BCR repertoire analysis. Great. Uh, this is Eric, I have a couple of questions. Um, you'll have this really cool, really cool stuff. Um, wondering what sort of differences you might predict between those who are convalescent versus those who are uh, severely ill, what sort of differences would you um, anticipate? Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's a great question, Eric. Um, so I, I think um, the biggest difference is that we're going to be able to detect. Um, so of people who are convalescent at this point will most likely not have a lot of uh, inflammatory <laughs> mediators in the plasma at, at the time of, of blood sample collection. But I think the most important difference that we'll pull out is actually um, comparing the B cell repertoire and the TCR specificity between individuals who are acutely infected and are um, admitted to the ICU with severe disease versus those who are convalescent. So my goal is that if we can, can compare the specificity of the T cell responses in people who have recovered and never had severe disease, people who have really acute severe disease right now, and people who have moderate disease that just required an admission to the floor, if we can identify regions of the virus that are differentially targeted amongst these three groups of patients that we will actually start gaining some insight into what part of the virus might be providing protective antigens as opposed to um, an, an aberrant or like a misdirected immune response. So I think the most interesting data will be comparing the T cell specificities as well as the BCR repertoire between the three groups. Right, there's a lot of potential. Uh, second is, is more uh, uh, a logistical question. Uh, Melissa and I submitted a grant where we're going to look at uh, at blood from uh, patients to get fresh cells and decided that logistically we couldn't see how we were going to actually get that those cells physically from uh, from orange and bring them back down here to uh, to 
to the campus and especially cells that, you know, you're, you're planning to look at innate immune cells, which would include some more sensitive cells such as neutrophils. Um, how, are you, how are you planning to organize that? So that's a really good question, Eric, and I'm glad you brought it up. So we are trying to work with the biospecimen uh, bank on getting prospectively consented patients so that blood samples can actually be obtained from UCIMC. Um, my lab staff is literally going to drive over and pick them up as soon as we have something like that worked up. Um, the other alternative that I'm pursuing is another collaboration with Eisenhower Medical Center in the desert. Um, the same thing. So we will just go get them if we can't get them from UCIMC. But I'm hopeful that we will be able to get these prospectively consented patient samples from UCIMC because it would be really silly for us to not be leveraging our hospital and having to go outside of UCI Medical Center to get these specimens. Yeah, exactly. And you would have to get them under good conditions in order to get high yes. quality RNA absolutely. for the single cell seek studies. Yes, absolutely. No, that's, that's a big hurdle right now. Would you, Ilham, this is Suzanne, as you know, I'm very interested in this logistical issue. Um, would you not need to get pre-consented patients at Eisenhower? Yes. Or so do you have are, some yes, kind of an IRB posted there already? Yes, we already submitted our IRB to Eisenhower. And we're, yes, because... And so you are pre-consenting patients there or yes. their consent form covers this activity? How does um, so the, basically the minute they are made, a diagnosis is made in the ED, they will be referred to our study. And if they consent, then we'll get one pretty much close to the time of admission. And then okay. we are working with their medical records to find out if these patients end up in the ICU or not, and then get an, another sample at the end of the... Okay, okay. Uh, one thing that occurs to me is that it's not bad you're working with multiple institutions because I'm, my question has to do with, I noticed you say this would be a really good start. So is the idea here that preliminary data to show practicality and data collection um, you need a much larger number of patients. Is that is that yes. inference correct? You, we need more patients and we need more time points. So this is preliminary because it's only an, a, a 10. And so of course, if we want to account for age, sex, race, and ethnicity as all very, very key biological variants, then we definitely have to go to more than 10 patients. So my goal is to show feasibility and um, and, and get the key preliminary data says we, we can do these experiments, we can do them with samples from patients and uh, build upon that to actually have a real clinical study where we have men and women of various ages and various race and ethnicity to do a real study. Seems like, oh, go ahead. Uh, yeah, this is hung here. Uh, a question. Um, are you um, stratifying your data or, or keeping track of whether these patients might be, uh, you know, receiving uh, treatment uh, for like interleukin-6 receptor blockade and so forth? Yes. Yeah. So I'm, I'm working with, um, you know, Dr. Edwards to make sure that we, um, and we're kind of trying to stay away from clinical tr patients admitted, patients in clinical trials right now for exactly that reason. Um, so yeah, we, we, that's why we're not going to be powered enough to really, and, and I'm really worried about, of course, like all my patients who are in the severe category will be over the age of 65 and all my moderate cases will be 35 years of age, for instance, which is a real possibility with an N equals 10. Um, but again, these are, we have to take a first step. And I think even if all we get out of this is establishing a protocol where we get perspective effectively co collected blood specimens from our own patients at UCIMC. And as, as everyone saw in the COVID-19 updates, we actually had a little surge. We we're up to 30 patients right now in the hospital. Um, if, even if we just establish a logistics of how to do this type of research with our medical center, I will consider this a well-spent $60,000.